Here's the Suzoscope kit, the new one. This is a very exciting product for me to open and play with because I think it's one of my all-time favourite toys. I've just got one thing to take out from here, which is this which I'm going to show later on. Now I wanted to show you what the contents are and then the construction later on. We've got a box here, or a little packet of plastic pieces, which is the main frame. We've got some mirrors here, which you have to be careful with. We've got a very curious little thing here, which is a magic wand some sticky things, and most important of all, instructions. And the instructions are very helpful, I find. So I'll open up at the beginning and point out what these pieces are. So these are just easy to peel items. You just take each of these, turn and unpeel them, and put them on the back of the mirror. So those are very simple to do. And there's one extra one, which is helpful. That I'll come to later on. This is the most interesting part, because this is the major part of the construction. These pieces are all very strange shapes, actually construct to make the main frame for this piece. One little thing you've got to watch you don't lose is this thing here, although it's not actually vital. It's a tiny little device for putting onto a tripod if you want to. You put it on the base and then the thing sits on the tripod rather than in your hands. So two of these are base pieces, so the top and bottom of the base, and the other pieces all go around them. Now the interesting thing is to protect them when they come out of the factory is they've been given uh, a covering here. There's a protective foil here which is very obvious, but would you believe that's protective foil? You can hardly see it, can you? So I'll undo this first one here. I do find this a little bit easier. I've had some which are very tricky to do. This is on the easy side, I think. It just peels off like that very easily. And underneath is pristine, shiny, good quality plastic. But the back one, you wouldn't think there's one there, but actually there is, and it needs, um, it needs peeling as well. It's almost a clear one. So that is now completely clear of all the plastic pieces. And you've got to do that another four or five times, and then the, the job is done. That's the first stage, really. I'll do, I'll do a couple more. There we are. And that's the last piece. Wasn't too difficult. So now the assembly starts with this very curious little thing which you fit onto a tripod. And we take one of the pieces, which could be the top or the bottom, I think it's symmetrical, but they do ask you in the instructions to make the ones with little tiny lines have on the outside, either in the base of the whole piece or the top of the whole piece. So I'll make this the base. And if this is the base, I'll need to have a tripod underneath it, so I'm going to put this thing here into there and then they're suggesting I should get that in nice and firm by gently hammering it. So let's have a go with a bit of wood and give it a little gentle and then hammer down here. And it's sticking up now. So there we are, that's the base all ready to be put into a tripod if you want to. That's part two. So the next stage is the eyepieces. There's two of these, they're actually going to end up right in front of your eyes, with your nose to the frame, up there. Now these fit into the base plate, because they're really quite thick plastic, <coughs> they're thicker than all the others, I find it was a bit of a struggle to get them in, so I used a little bit of grease on it, and on one occasion I even had a little bit of filing to do, but there's the base plate, there's a bit of writing on the outside, which you don't need to worry about too much, but I, I did it so you can read it, and you just tilt it slightly and it fits in snugly. And then the other piece fits on the other side, that also fits in with a bit of a push. Ah, there we are. And that's the end of that stage. <laughs> the next stage is the mirrors. we have got to put four mirrors on. Two of them are large ones. Uh, there's a medium size and a very small one. And uh, in this 
bubble pla plastic to protect them. Mirrors. There's no backing on this, or well, there is a backing to it, but you don't have to remove it, which is which is a help. You will sell it out. There's a medium size, a small one, and then two large ones to put on all together. The small one is interesting because it only requires one of these sticky pieces on it to hold it in. So I'm just going to look at the instructions. Step 5A. We've got a piece going like that. These are very easy to undo. You just pull that back like that. And I'm still not touching the actual sticky bit there. I keep my hands away because I've got a bit of grease in my hands and I want to make sure all the grease here is off. And going to this, you just place the piece on the back of the mirror, roughly in the centre. There we are. Tap, 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 tap. Take off the backing shape. And now they suggest that you should put it in the very middle of this piece, just close to this end as you can. So it's closer to one end than it is the other. That's roughly in the centre. It's not absolutely vital. I think a bit, a bit of a tap down like that. I'll need to clean that later on. So that's one mirror on. I give little presses there as well. That's one of the two. And then the other two mirrors, the other three mirrors, all require two lots, because they're much bigger, all require two lots of these sticky things. So let's undo one more here and place it on the, this end of the mirror. And another one here. And place that on this end of the mirror. One on each end. And now we remove the sticky back tape, this protective foil, and the other one on this side. And this one goes pretty well directly on the very centre of this. Tiny little black, black border all the way around, if you're doing it right. Tiny bit up too, because there's a bit, of, a, bit, a bit of curvature there, which I'm trying to avoid. And I've got that very precisely in the centre. There we are. Sometimes you give a bit of pressure like that. So there's the first stage of the mirrors. There's two more to do. So that's the four mirrors. The two big ones, a medium size and a small one. And what we have to do now is simply assemble them on the frame. I always start with the small one initially. This is the one that's closest to the eye. That's why it's the smallest one. They're suggesting in the instructions that this edge, which is closest to this edge, should be furthest away from the eyepiece. So I put it on the edge of the table and snap it into place. Now when I'm looking through here I'm seeing that mirror. The second one is out here and again come off the table and place this in its slot. Is it there? Yes it is. And the last stage are the two big mirrors which go and they're both symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way which one goes where for these two, and these go on the very outside edge of the frame. Very long, large mirror, because they're somewhere away from the eye. That fits in very easily. And the last one, the final slot, goes here. That actually is the thing completed, except there's no top to it, so it's not very firm. It needs the top piece on, on the top to actually make the thing hold together well. But at least it shows the, the idea. The eyes go here, and you're seeing way out, and a reversal as well. So anyway, that's the end of that stage. So the very last piece to put in is the top of the pseudoscope. This is the same shape, although it's a mirror image of the base plate, and it goes exactly over the piece like that. What we've got to do now is get in all five or six slots at the same time, simultaneously, but um, a bit of wiggling, we can get there eventually. I start off with the corner here and see if I can get this thick one, which is the one of the two eyepieces, into its slot. Oh, yep, we're there. Oh, it's come out again. And then we go to the next one, which is going to be the middle mirror, the middle size mirror. Let's put this back in again. I think that's there actually. And this one's going to come back to there, that's going to come back to there. And I think I'll move over to this one here next. 
Yes, that's, that's going to move in, and that's going to move in too. That one, I'm not sure about that. This is the one that's being obstinate. So it is trying to get in. That's trying to get in, and that's trying to get in. Yes, that's it. that one's in, and that's in, and that's in, and as usual, let's see, last one. I'll turn this over because we've got that little protrusion here which makes for a bit of tr trouble. And it's easier when it's all nice and level on the bottom of the table. That's much easier to do like that. I think you'll find those will come all the way to the top of the slot. So is that, so is that, and so is that. And they're all ready to the top of the slot here. So one, two, three, four, five slotted. I think that's finished. And I can start playing with it, holding it up to the face and having fun looking at strange things. So one of the items to show which they include in the kit is a magic wand. What can we use this for? Well, we can open it up to start with, that's all right. And then we've got to try and make that thing I threw out at the very beginning or put aside to appear. It's uh, called a Hoberman's sphere, and it's used as a, a target, a curious term that, ter that Terry uses to make things look extraordinary through the pseudoscope. So let's wave the wand and a bit of abracadabra and see if we can get that Hoberman sphere to reappear, and then we can use it for a target. Oh, there it is. Oh, yes. Up, up a bit, up a bit. And open up. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. So if we open it to the full extent, put the wand through the middle, this is what Terry suggests. And then when we set it rotating and look at it through the pseudoscope, something very strange happens. The thing seems to rotate the opposite direction and the wand sometimes, it doesn't always seem to work with me, sometimes the wand appears to go in a contrary motion, which is very strange. Yes, certainly the sphere is now going the opposite way, anti-clockwise looking down, and sometimes, although it disappears as well, the wand goes contrary motion, which is most peculiar. This is a wonderful target that Terry's devised for this pseudoscope. Fantastic. Against different backgrounds, we'll get some different effects, but that's a very good start to this wonderful apparatus. Good stuff, Terry.